The nervous system. Do you still remember how this system works? The nervous system is as important as any other system in every organism's body. This system consists of a complex network of nerves and specialized cells known as neurons. It controls and sends information between different parts of the body and responses to stimuli. The nervous system also regulates our ability to move, breathe, see, think, and many other functions. The nervous system can be predetermined by its two main components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, or CNS, is made up of the brain and spinal cord. The brain incorporates data from all around the body, while the spinal cord coordinates activity across the entire structure. As for the peripheral nervous system, bundles of nerve fibers known as axons, carry information from the central nervous system straight to the system. The cranial nerves, spinal nerves, peripheral nerves, and neuromuscular junction make up the system. A neuron or nerve cell is the basic component of the brain and nervous system. They receive signals from the things that happen to us outside of our body and give out motor responses to our muscles. They transform and relay electrical signals at every step along the way. Here is a random fact about neurons. Do you know that the human brain contains about 100 billion neurons? With that said, neurons cannot function without its important parts, beginning with dendrites. Dendrites are extensions of the cell body that receive chemical signals from other neurons' axon termini. These signals are converted into little electric impulses, which then transport them inside or towards the cell body. Second is soma. It is the cell body of a neuron, which contains the nucleus and various other organelles. Next would be the axon. In vertebrates, an axon is a long slender projection of a nerve cell that transports electrical impulses called action potentials away from the nerve cell body. However, the majority of vertebrates' axons are encased in a myelin sheath which speeds up impulse transmission. That is why a study has shown that some large axons may transmit impulses at speeds up to 90 meters or 300 feet per second. But what are myelin sheets? They protect and insulate nerve cells electrically. They are wrapped around axons that are made of fatty tissue sleeves. The last part of a neuron is an axon terminal. It refers to the axon endings that make synaptic connection with another nerve cell or with an infector cell. Now that we have tackled the nervous system, let's jump right into the endocrine system. The main function of the endocrine system is to keep tabs on all of the body's chemical coordination. It aids in the growth and function of the reproductive system and the development of both the brain and the nervous system. A feedback mechanism is a physiological loop that either brings the body closer to or further away from its usual or state of state. The feedback mechanism, often known as feedback loop, either enhances or inhibits a biological pathway. This table consists of the different parts of the endocrine gland system. You can also see the incorporated hormones of each gland. Hypothalamus, this stuff will be the link between the neurological and endocrine systems, with its primary role being to keep the body in a state of homeostasis. Anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary gland is the endocrine system's primary regulator. 
coordinating signals from the hypothalamus and peripheral endocrine organs. Parathyroid gland. The parathyroid glands are four tiny glands behind the thyroid in the neck that regulates and control calcium levels in the blood, bones, and throughout the body. Adrenal gland. Adrenal glands are small, triangular-shaped glands placed on top of both kidneys are known as suprarenal glands. Hormones produced by the adrenal glands serve to regulate your metabolism, immunological system, blood pressure, stress response, and other vital activities. Pancreas Pancreas can be found behind the stomach in the upper left abdomen. It is responsible for transforming the food we ingest into energy for our body cells. Kidney Two bean-shaped organs, which roughly the size of a fist, make up the kidneys. Its primary role is to eliminate waste materials and excess fluid from the body. Ovaries At the midpoint of each menstrual cycle, the ovaries generate and releases eggs or oocytes into the female reproductive canal. Testes The testes are important for producing sperm and manufacturing testosterone, the principal male sex hormone. Okay, let's know what these two have in common. The nervous system and the endocrine system coordinate with one another. There are situations where these two work together. The endocrine system, along with the nervous system, coordinates the body function to maintain homeostasis. Not only that, but they also work together to initiate and control movement and any other physiological processes that movement is involved in. Comparing the nervous and endocrine system of an animal and plant is easy to distinguish. It is because plants do not have a nervous system. Do you believe it? But although plants do not possess this system, they do seem to have their own way of a nervous system. And this is through the production of chemical substances. Researchers have discovered that the touch of a caterpillar's tiny toes can cause plants to respond defensively. They have discovered this while testing how plants sense gravity and they suspected calcium signaling is involved. After observing a plant under a fluorescent microscope, there, they saw calcium dramatically increasing. It all starts with a chemical, an amino acid, the glutamate. It activates receptors that triggers a calcium-based signal that moves through the plant. This will send a signal throughout the system that then activates hormones for defense, very much alike to the nervous system of our body as well as to the animals. Plant Response or Stimuli Plants which are stationary exhibit responses to external stimuli such as the wind, a drop of water, and even a touch. Responses are much more important than we thought, and it helps attain nutrients, put ways of survival towards extreme conditions, adapt a defense mechanism for predators, and lastly, to reproduce. A good example for this is the plant makahiya, which closes its leaflets once touched. Next is tomata. Stomata is a part of a plant and its initial response is to close when there is a rapid loss of water. Release of chemicals. There are also plants that release chemicals to have an agent of defense against pathogens and predators and warn neighboring plants to prepare for impending attacks. These responses are biological phenomena called tropism. Tropism is a biological mechanism that enables plants to move toward or against the source of the stimuli. It is caused by a change in the plant's growth pattern and can be defined as positive if it moves toward the stimulus or negative when the opposite. There are four types of tropism. Geotropism, hydrotropism, sigmotropism, and phototropism. What is geotropism? It is a growth response in respect of gravity. Hydrotropism is the growth or bends of a plant in response to water. Sigmotropism is the plant's directional growth as a response to a touch stimuli. And lastly, phototropism is the orientation of a plant in response to light. Great example of this is a sunflower. 
Hormones in plants Just like animals and other living organisms, plants do not differ in hormone secretion. It is a part of how they react to a stimulus. And here is a list of just a few of plant hormones and their roles in a plant's overall system. Abscisic acid Closing of stomata and seed dormancy Auxins Cell elongation and differentiation of shoots and roots Cytokinins Promote cell division Promotion of sprouting of lateral buds Delaying the aging in leaves And opening of stomata Ethylene Ripening of fruit and gibberellins, germination of seeds and sprouting of buds, elongation of stems, stimulation of flowering, development of fruit, breaking the dormancy in seeds and buds. Now let's go to stimulus and response. A stimulus is an observable change in an organism's internal or external environment's physical or chemical structure. When an organism reacts to a stimulus, this is known as the response. There are five sensory receptors, photoreceptor, mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors, thermoreceptors, and pain receptors. What is photoreceptor? In the retina, photoreceptors are specialized neurons that transform light into electrical impulses that stimulate physiological processes. Mechanoreceptors are cells that detect pressure and vibration frequencies and convert pressure and vibration into an electrical signal. Chemoreceptors monitor the amounts of hydrogen ions in the blood to detect the presence of carbon dioxide. Thermoreceptors, however, are non-specialized sense receptors, or more precisely, the receptive region of a sensory neuron that transmits absolute and relative temperature changes primarily within a safe range. Lastly, pain receptors. These sensory receptors correspond to a body part. First is the photoreceptor that is linked to our eyes. As we are all familiar now on the parts of a human eye, the sclera, the outermost layer of the eyeball that also surrounds the choroid, the transparent cornea that forms the white of the eye, and the iris giving the eye its color. And we wouldn't forget the retina, focused image that is depicted by our vision. The retina contains the photoreceptor cells which impulses nerves to correspond to the visual areas of the brain, thus making an image form. Now let's go to the human ear. Mechanoreceptors correspond to our ears. As the outer ear lobes catch sound waves and channel them to the eardrums, it shall pass through the three small bones. Hammer, anvil, and syrup to the eutician tube that will equalize the pressure or air pressure towards upper and lower canal. Pressure from the canals will cause release of neurotransmitters that induce action potential in the auditory neurons. Now let's go to the human nose and mouth, otter and taste senses. Our otter and taste senses are linked to the chemoreceptors. They are interrelated. The sense receptors in the nose can detect molecules that help differentiate into numerous types of odors. Other molecules bind the receptor molecules on the chemoreceptor cilia, thus triggering receptor potentials. As for the sense receptor in the tongue, chemoreceptors help our taste buds to detect kinds of taste, whether it's salty, bitter, or sweet. The two have similar perceptions. In many cases, they are connected to one another. When one has a common cold, when there is disruption of sense of smell, we tend to also lose our sense of taste. To pack it up, our body has its own enthralling way to create responses, signals, and transmissions. They do have a few fundamental differences, and as to recall, the endocrine system uses chemical signaling by means of hormones which are produced by glands, while the nervous system utilizes its neural impulses to create electrical signaling. Different but common in both ends. But one thing we can all say on how our body system works, all have corresponding functions, but one common purpose, growth, reproduction, and survival.